Good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Welcome to the CCAV by Fijinam webinar on foreign invested company incorporation in Vietnam under the new regulation. I am Adam Poulaxezian. I'm the director of the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Vietnam, and I'd like to thank you all for joining. Well, it's not a breaking news, you know, Vietnam is developing super fast. Uh, for example, maybe you know the numbers, despite the global crisis, uh, GDP grew by 3% in 2020, it's a positive growth. Um, and year after year, Vietnam is considered as a relevant investment destination for, for, for foreign investors coming from everywhere in the world. As you may know, Vietnam has a lot to offer when it comes to manufacturing, for example. Uh, Vietnam has a domestic market of 100 million people with a fast expansion of the middle class. We can also note a strong rise in demands in infrastructure, healthcare, and agriculture, for example. So apart uh, from these numerous business opportunities, abundant resources, inexpensive workforce, the Vietnamese government encourages foreign direct investment by constantly renewing regulations and providing incentives. So, it is crucial to, uh, to be up to date and to understand well the local context when you develop your business abroad. Today, in this webinar, thanks to Fidinam, you will benefit from valuable insights regarding the notable changes of the Law on Investment 2020 and Law on Enterprise 2020. These, these laws affect the incorporation and operation of foreign owned companies in Vietnam. So without uh, further ado, please uh, let me give the floor and introduce our experts and speakers today. Anne de Roulac, head of the French tech desk Fidinam Hong Kong and Fung Tao, relation, relationship manager, head of corporate advisory. So please Anne, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for this short uh, introduction. So, um, in fact, uh, let me introduce you briefly who is uh, Fidinam and uh, what we are going to talk about today. So, what is the agenda? Uh, I'll try to be brief on the agenda. We'll uh, introduce you uh, who is Fidinam, what we do, how we can assist your business in Asia. Uh, before I leave the floor to uh, my colleague uh, Tao, who is going to present uh, more into details the current procedures for setting up a foreign invested uh, entity in Vietnam, including uh, under the light of the new regulatory, regulatory changes. We will try to illustrate this practice uh, with, a, with a case study. Uh, and we will open the webinar to, to, to questions uh, you may have. So, by the way, if within this uh, session you do have questions, please don't hesitate to use the Q&A box or the chat box uh, option and uh, to immediately write down uh, your question. Depending on your question, we'll either interrupt and uh, answer it immediately or keep it for the uh, Q&A at the end of our webinar. So who is uh, Fidinam and uh, what do we do? How do we assist uh, our customers? Fidinam, we are a boutique uh, consulting firm providing tax expertise and corporate service and various types of business consultancy. Uh, we, are, uh, we have a Swiss DNA. We have 60 years uh, existence. Our headquarters is uh, based in uh, Lugano and Geneva in Switzerland, where um, we have around 180 professionals. And then uh, we have offices based in key jurisdictions overseas, including Dubai for the Middle East, Hong Kong, Singapore, Ho Chi Minh, and Shanghai for Asia. Uh, the rest of the world, we're around uh, 120, 130 person. So I am myself based in uh, Hong Kong, while uh, my colleague uh, Tao is uh, leading our uh, corporate service practice in Vietnam from Ho Chi Minh. So let me explain further what we can do uh, specifically for the Vietnamese market. 
So we assist uh, clients, whether they are uh, international SMEs or uh, very international entrepreneur uh, having solo kind of projects with market entry analysis. We can provide uh, regulatory licensing and pre-analysis. We can also assess, uh, of course, on the, the, the tax aspect of uh, your project, tax, visa, uh, all the practical aspect to set up your business in, in Vietnam. Once uh, this market entry analysis is done, we assist you with the incorporation of the project, meaning setting up most likely what uh, will be an FIE, what we're going to talk about today, a foreign invested entity. Um, and then we help you running this entity through accounting and tax services, uh, HR, payroll, social contribution services. I would say all the back office uh, work we can assist you with. We are, uh, I would say, corporate concierge uh, to whom you can ask all your business related questions and uh, we'll help you dealing with them in, uh, the, in a painless uh, process. Then uh, a few a few additional services uh, worth mentioning, or the fact that uh, of course, uh, as they are they are DNA, uh, we are expert with international tax. Uh, this includes uh, cross border uh, taxation uh, topic. So very often, and uh, this is why I'm I'm also speaking today, though I am based in. Uh, Hong Kong, we assist clients from one jurisdiction entering another jurisdiction, meaning we will have cross-border tax issues, whether it deals with uh, entering the market, distributing the profit uh, from one market to another, paying intercompany invoice from one company to another, uh, working on transfer pricing, uh, profit shifting in light of all the um, international regulations uh, nowadays that makes your business very transparent and that you have to be compliant with all these uh, international regulations. Um, I will end saying that we have developed a specific practice with uh, digital assets and more and more we are assisting uh, entrepreneurs or uh, solo investors who um, invest in, uh, in crypto assets, whether it's a uh, Bitcoins or other types of uh, dedicated uh, tokens. Uh, we have developed a specific accounting and tax practice linked to this uh, investment, which are very, of a very peculiar nature. This goes together with our wealth planning assistance, uh, meaning we are used assisting individuals uh, with the um, preservation, but also transmission of their wealth to the next generation. Uh, so this makes us uh, very versatile, but also as we are boutique, we remain quite agile to assist our clients with different purposes. Our team in Vietnam uh, is uh, mainly uh, led by Tao, uh, who is our head of corporate uh, advisory and who will be the key speaker today, just after me. Uh, and uh, two, who is the business manager of our Oshimin uh, unit. Um, we also can assist uh, from, Viet from uh, Hong Kong, from Singapore and from other jurisdictions as Vietnam Asian teams are used working uh, close uh, together. So without any further ado, uh, please have my colleague uh, Tao introduce you uh, the procedures and the practical aspect of uh, nowadays setting up a foreign invested entity in Vietnam. Thank you, Anne. Uh, thank you, Ada. Uh, good afternoon to audience connecting from Asia and uh, good morning to audience connecting from Europe. Uh, as you may know, there were a lot of regulation took into effect uh, in the year 2021, uh, such as the, the labor courts, security laws, law on en environment, law on uh, enterprise, uh, in which the law on enterprise and law on investments uh, stipulating directly uh, the incorporation in operation of foreign invested company in Vietnam. And that's why uh, today, with the support of a 
of the Pran Chamber in Vietnam. Uh, we organized this event and would like to give all the audience here the, the updates on the new regulation. And uh, we do hope that the, all the information provided in this event can be useful for you, uh, especially for the foreign investor who are exploring the business opportunity in my country. And uh, Ed, uh, Anne already shared during my presentation, uh, if you have any questions on any particular matters, uh, please do not hesitate to send your uh, question in Q&A box or chat box. Uh, we are happy to clarify, uh, clarify all the concern in, in this section or uh, if there's any matter required further uh, research, uh, please allow it to get back to you via email. And now, uh, please allow me go through the first topic, uh, how to set up a foreign invested company in Vietnam. Uh, when talking about foreign invested companies, we do have a 100% foreign owned company and joint venture company. Accordingly, uh, if foreign investor doing uh, business in industry, which are already open for foreign investment. So they are entitled to set up a Vietnamese subsidiary company, which is wholly owned by the foreign investor. However, if they involve in industry, still need the local shareholder. Um, so they have to partnership with the Vietnamese uh, partner and set up a joint venture company. Uh, giving you some example for industry, still need a local shareholder, such as for um, advertising service, custom clearance services, or travel agency and tour operator services. In these industries, uh, the foreign capital contribution threshold can be up to 99%. However, 51% is the maximum trade holds that the government uh, give to the, the foreign investor if they invest in the road transport station for free. 49% uh, is the trade hold uh, given for foreign investor if they invest in a maritime transport station service or uh, internal, um, internal waterway uh, transport station service. So, um, Next, uh, next slide, please. Too. Um, so, uh, how about the legal procedure and timeline to have a foreign invested company established uh, in Vietnam? I would say that the foreign investor must go through two steps. Step one is apply for the uh, investment registration certificates or so for uh, uh, IRC. And uh, following this certificate and application, uh, uh, for the enterprise registration certificates is required and the company in Vietnam will be legally formed uh, as from the date of the enterprise registration certificates. Uh, regarding the time lies, the overall time life for incorporation would be uh, around three months, uh, already including the time for the investor to prepare all the information and document required and also include the time for the authority to handle the application. Uh, however, uh, for some special case, depending on the, the target business or the capital scale, there will be additional step so that the, the timeline will be prolonged or the timeline might be shortened. So we, we will see in the next slide for special case. Here we have two special cases for the foreign investment project, subject to the investment policy of rule board. Accordingly, uh, if the foreign investment project involved in a conditional uh, business or if uh, the investor invest the giant's capital, such as uh, the project, uh, the project on the um, golf uh, construction in uh, business or the project on nuclear power plant or the investment project that's required the relocation of uh, 20,000 uh, people or more in the mountainous area or uh, 55 um, or 50,000 and more people in other areas. So the foreign investors are required to carry out a procedure to apply for the investment policy approval. 
And this approval might be issued by either the National Assembly, the Prime Minister, or the Provincial People Committee, uh, depending on the target business and the capital scale before being granted with the uh, IRC. So you can see from the chart, there will be an additional step. Uh, so-called investment policy approval is required for these special cases. And however, if the foreign investors um, setting up a minimum size or small size innovative startup, they are not required to apply for the investment registration certificates, meaning that they can go straight to the um, enterprise registration certificate to set up the company in Vietnam. And um, also, uh, I think that um, all the people here may, uh, may heard about the supply zone or additional license uh, when the foreign investor invest in some conditional active, conditional business. And yes, there are some, there are some conditional business here. Like if you uh, invest in a restaurant, so after applying for the ERC, IRC, you have to apply for the certificates of food hygiene safety or if the company in Vietnam performing the retail uh, distribution. So uh, after the company set up, you have to apply for the business license. Uh, of, um, or for example, if um, you're running a short-term training institution like um, a foreign language center. So beside the IRC, ERC, uh, you have to apply for the educational operation license. Uh, that is just some example for conditioners or business that the foreign investor need to apply for uh, additional license. And uh, in the next slides, I would like to introduce about the company type in Vietnam. Uh, according to the current regulation, we do have four company type being a uh, private enterprise, partnership, limited liability company, and choice stock company, in which the last two company type are most common and preferred by both local and, uh, and uh, foreign investor. And uh, here uh, I just give brief information on the key feature of the company type uh, for, uh, for, for choice stock companies and uh, limited liability company. As you can see uh, on the screen, uh, for the choice stock company, the minimum number of shareholders is three. However, there's no restriction regarding the maximum number of shareholders. While for the single member LLC, we have only one company owner being an individual or an organization. And uh, between two and uh, 50 members uh, are the member of the multi-member LLC and the member can be individuals or organization. And um, the special regulation uh, given to uh, shareholder, company owner and all member of the company are um, they have limited responsibility toward the death and other uh, property liability of the company to the extent of the capital that they invested uh, in the company. And um, <clears throat> that is some brief information on uh, how to set up the foreign invested company in Vietnam and the key feature uh, of the company type in Vietnam. However, from our experience um, before investing, before setting up an an uh, independent legal entity in Vietnam, uh, the foreign investor might consider other commercial presence. And uh, the law of Vietnam provides two kinds of uh, commercial presence here is for representative office and branch. Uh, let me give some brief information on these two uh, commercial presence. Uh, firstly, for a uh, condition for the foreign investor to set up a rep office and a branch in Vietnam. So to set up a rep office in Vietnam, the foreign investor must has been operating for at least one year as from the incorporation days. Whereas for branch, the foreign investor must be, uh, must has been operating for at least five years before setting up a branch in Vietnam. Um, 
the establishment license terms for the rep office and the brand is the same with the maximum of five years and extensible. Uh, if the foreign investor want to prolong the operation term of the rep office or the brand, they have to uh, submit an application to the licensing authority to extend the time, the lifetime of the representative in the branch. And here, and also for the scope of work, as you might know already, is that the rep office are not allowed to perform the, the, um, the, the profit generating activity in Vietnam. What they can do is just uh, perform the promotional activities for the business of the mother company in Vietnam, uh, perform the market research or acting at a license or fee. Uh, however, for the brand, according to uh, Vietnam commitment to WTOs, there are some service that um, foreign investors are allowed to open a brand in Vietnam, such as legal service, uh, computers and related service, um, management consulting service, um, banking, insurance, securities, franchise and construction services. And I have to say that uh, the scope of work is rather limited. So um, I have just finished the first topic on how to set up a foreign investing company. And now uh, I would like to move to the next session uh, about a noticeable change of Vietnam. Uh, as you might know, um, from, from the 1st of January 2021, the law on enterprise and the law on investment took into effect. And to guide the implementation of the two regulation, the government promulgated the degree 31 and the degree 01, uh, detailing and guiding some articles of the law on enterprise and law on investment. So in general, uh, the new changes set more favorable as the condition for the enterprise. And let me introduce first the change uh, in the law on enterprise 2020. For the capital contribution, um, the time limit for capital contribution has not been changed, meaning that uh, the both uh, domestic investor and uh, foreign investors have uh, 90 days as from the date of the IRC to fulfill the capital contribution obligation. However, the new regulation excludes the time of transporting, importing the, the asset to be contributed as capital. And the new regulation also excludes the time for performing administrative procedure to uh, transfer the ownership of access from the member company, uh, the, um, from the company member to the company. And this new regulation already it especially help investors to avoid violating the time limit for capital contribution due to uh, take too much time uh, on uh, transporting, importing, and uh, transferring the ownership of the access from the company member to the company. And also in this regard, there's one noticeable change uh, regarding the timeline for adjustment of the capital. In case any uh, capital contributor fail to contribute or in uh, sufficiently contribute the, the capital as committed, if the former regulation gave the company 60 days to update the license, the new regulation shortened the timeline, meaning that the company has only 30, 30 days uh, from the last day the charter capital were due to be contributed in full to actress its charter capital and uh, capital contribution ratio of the member in case of multi member limited liability company. Um, I mean, to update the license uh, with the amount according to the paid in uh, capital amount. And uh, in next slides, we would like to talk about the new regulation on. Uh, legal representative of the Vietnamese company. Uh, similar to the former regulation, the company may have one or more than one legal representative. One of them would be a resident of Vietnam, and more importantly, 
right and obligation of each legal rep must be specified in the company charter. However, the law on enterprise 2014 didn't say what will happen if the company charter did not have a provision regulating the rights and obligation of the on the legal rep, but uh, the law are already uh, handled this. Um, the new laws on uh, enterprise uh, status in the absence of the provision stipulating rights and obligation of its legal rep, its legal rep will have full authority in front of any third party. And most importantly, um, all of the legal representative will take choice responsibility for any judgment called to company according to the law. And here we have some important notes that um, choice responsibility means a, a responsibilities must be performed by more than one person and in which the obligees have a right to request any uh, one of the obligor to perform in its entirety. And the assignment of rights and obligation of the rep, uh, legal rep uh, will be have legal val validation only once it is written in the company charter. And uh, in, the com in the limited liability companies, according to the new regulation, uh, it must have at least uh, one legal representative being a person holding the position of the chairman of the member council or, or the company resi president or the general director or director. Uh, in the choice of company where the company has only one legal representative, so the chairman of the board of management or the director of the company must be the legal representative of the, that company. And um, in next slides, we would like to talk about uh, the regula new regulation on the company seal. Uh, as you might know, uh, before, uh, before 2021, all the company uh, was uh, required to notify uh, the seal chamber at the website of the licensing authority before putting the seal in use. However, uh, from the days the new regulation took taking into effect, uh, this um, obligation is no longer required, meaning that uh, the company can use the SEAL without any notification. And uh, similar to the former uh, regulation, the enterprise is as is uh, discretion to determine the type, number, form, and content of its SEAL. Um, if the law on enterprise 2014 stipulates that the seal of an enterprise is used in case uh, as requested by the law uh, and uh, upon agreement of the party, the new regulation uh, regulates that the enterprise only use the seal in transaction as requested by the law, for example, in the, the construction contract or in the house uh, sale and purchase contract, does the law require uh, the organization have been sued, must stamp the seal on the contract. Uh, however, um, personally, I think that it will take significant long time for, for everyone to understand and apply this uh, new regulation smoothly because the, most of people now still consider a, a document have legal validation if uh, it have a signature of the authorized representative and the company seal. So let's see. And uh, the last point regarding company seal here is the, the new laws already uh, recognize two types of seal, being a physical seals or the traditional seal that we, we, we make uh, at the seal company and the digital signature in accordance with the law on electronic transaction. Uh, the, the, I think it will be uh, further guided by authority how to, uh, how to apply this regulation in the near future. But uh, obviously, this regulation gives a lot of benefit to the enterprise, such as um, the enterprise will be more confident uh, in entering uh, elec electronic transaction. It uh, facilitates their 
flexibility and efficiency in executing document and eliminates administrative procedure. And um, that's and in the next slides, uh, we would like to talk about the abolishment of control bar and or controller uh, as already um, requires previously. Uh, previously, um, multi-member limited liability company were required to establish a control bar and uh, the single member LCC was the requires to nominate a controller. However, uh, according to the new regulation, um, the con control bar or controller are not a mandatory requirement. It, it totally depends on the decision of the company owner or uh, the company member council. Um, yes, and uh, next is I would like to talk about the new regulation on the payment for a capital transfer transaction. Uh, the former regulation, uh, when, the, when having an M&A transaction in a, a, a economic organization uh, in Vietnam, uh, the formal regulation require own payment for capital or share transfer of foreign investor in a foreign invested company must be made uh, by a company onshore capital account, which were not consistent with uh, the regulation provided in the Circular 06 2019 on the forex control over direct investment in Vietnam. And uh, now the law on enterprise 2020 and this uh, inconsistency by providing that uh, own payment for the capital and share transfer transaction must be made in accordance with the forex control regulation. To be more specific, as you can see uh, at the slide, uh, the transaction between the two investors being both resident or non-resident are not required to be made via direct investment capital bank account of the target company. However, with the transaction between an investor being um, non-resident and an investor being resident, it is required to be made via the direct investment capital account of the Vietnamese company, it mean the target company. And um, next slide, please. And in this next in this slide, uh, we would like to introduce the new time limits for the prior notice of a temporary business suspensions or resumption. Uh, as you might notice, under the negative effects of COVID nineteen, there are a lot of business that uh, decided to temporarily uh, suspend the business for a certain. Uh, time periods and um, the, the former regulation asked the companies uh, to inform the authority in writing as late um, 15 days before their business suspension or resumption. However, the new regulation shortened the timeline significantly. Uh, accordingly, the time limit for the prior notice of temporary business suspension will be reduced to only three working days. Um, and uh, the last point uh, regarding the law on enterprise years is about the minority shareholder protection regulation. So according to the new regulation, instead of a, to, uh, can you please uh, show the next slide? Okay, thank you. Um, according to the new regulation, instead of holding 10% or more, of the totals of ordinary share for a consecutive period of six months or more. Now a shareholder or group of shareholders holding at least 5% of the total ordinary shares or a lower percentage as specified in the company charter without any minimum holding periods will have a certain right in according to the law uh, such as accessing information regarding the operation of the company or request the convenience of a general meeting of the shareholder 
in some parasitic circumstances. Um, that is the only noticeable change given in the uh, law on enterprise 2020. And uh, in the next slides, uh, we would like to introduce the change in accordance with the law on investment uh, 2020. And uh, the first uh, topic, and I think it will be the most interesting topic, that the new regulation uh, uh, stipulates uh, regarding the list of restricted and conditional business line. Um, the new laws emphasize the same treatment uh, given to uh, the foreign investor and to domestic investor when they enter into Vietnam market in the same sector. There will be no discrimination uh, between local investor and a foreign investor except for some um, specific exception in which the government of Vietnam reserved the right to compose a list of business restricted to market entry for foreign investors, including the list of restricted sector and uh, the list with conditional market access. Being said that uh, this is the first time the list of restricted sector and the list of uh, sector having conditional market access condition applicable to um, foreign investor and foreign investor company were officially announced in the legal document being the degree 31. Um, accordingly, the first leak uh, comprising our business that are limited to a foreign investor who carry out a business in Vietnam in any form. This list include uh, 20 business line, uh, the majority of which have not been committed in the uh, international uh, treaty or considered as sensitive under national security or are intended to protect the local investor or state-owned enterprise, uh, such as um, fresh activity and gathering in any form, temporary for uh, temporary uh, and export for re export of good, public parcel service, or uh, public survey services. And you can find the full list of restricted business in the section A, uh, appendix one of the degree 31. And the second list comprise business that have market access requirement uh, applicable for foreign investor here with include um, uh, 59 sector. Uh, the, the investor investment condition here is, might include the foreign ownership limitation, uh, investment form, uh, investor capacity, the scope of investment implementation to be checked in the local regulation and applicable international treaty that Vietnam is a member. And now the detailed condition on foreign investor will be uploaded uh, on the Vietnam National uh, Investment Information System. And you can visit the website and you can see the list of uh, condition applicable. And the most noticeable provision on this matter is that if a foreign investor wishes to invest uh, in industry other than these mentioned above, they would be regarded as if they were a local investor. And another important point that we also would like to give you today uh, in this regard is the application of the restrictive and conditional sector. Here, these two lists will apply for foreign investors, sure. However, it is also applied for foreign invested company in Vietnam. If the foreign investor use this company to set up another new company or to purchase share and capitals uh, as another economic organization in Vietnam or to perform a business cooperation contract, for example. So um, if the foreign invested company has more than 50% of its charter capital held by foreign investor, or the company has more than 50% of its charter capital held by an, an economic organization as stipulated in point A, or the company has more than 50% of its charter capital held by foreign investor and uh, economic organization stipulated uh, 
uh, in the point A, uh, they have to comply with uh, the list of um, restricted and conditional sector uh, as if they were a foreign investor. And uh, in next slides, we would like to introduce about uh, the new regulation on uh, investment incentive given to uh, investor when they doing business in Vietnam. Uh, the new law supplement object uh, and tied to the investment incentive in an effort to support startup and uh, SME in Vietnam, as well as um, company operating in uh, environmental protection industry. The government has already put in place incentive for them in a hope of providing better condition for a strong and substantial development in the near future. And in addition, the new law added new form of investment incentive. As you may know, for traditional uh, incentive like a, a corporate income tax incentive, uh, exemption from a uh, reduction of a uh, custom duty land levy or land rent. Now the new regulation provide to investor the new form of uh, investment incentive being uh, also the rate is depreciation, uh, increasing the deductible expense upon calculation of, of the taxable income. Um, in uh, the next topic that we, we are interested in is for the change in the requirement for M&A approval. Under the new law, uh, a foreign investor is required to obtain uh, the, the approval for the M&A transaction before making payment for a capital transfer if the acquisition leads to the one of the following cases. Uh, if it leads to an increase in the foreign ownership in a company engaging in business line with market access condition or an increase in foreign ownership in a company from 50% uh, or less to more than 50% of charter capital or is lead to uh, a further increase in the foreign ownership is it has been more than 50%. And also another new regulation is that when the foreign investor conduct the uh, acquisition in a company which has the, the land URI certificates on an Iceland or a coastal or border commute, uh, which affect national defense and uh, security, the foreign investor is required to obtain the M&A approval before uh, making payment for the capital transfer. And uh, the last topic, uh, uh, here uh, related to the law on investment is for the, the fork termination of project due to the same transaction. Uh, this is very new regulation provided by the law on inter, uh, along law on investment 2021 20. Uh, according to the new regulation, uh, the investment registration authority will have right to terminate uh, an investment project if the investor conducted the investment activities on the basic of a shame transaction in accordance with the, the civil law. And under the civil court uh, 2015, uh, a shame uh, civil transaction is understood as a, a transaction established by the parties to conceal another unlying transaction. Uh, for example, an agreement where the nominee conduct the investment incentive for the benefits of another person could be regarded as a shame transaction. And uh, however, the new law on uh, investment has not clarified some uh, important points on um, uh, criteria for identify a shame transaction and also the competence for determine the same transaction. It will be by a decision of the, 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 the investment registration authority or by a decision of the competent course. So in my opinion, there will be uh, need um, some further guidance from the government uh, in this regard. 
um, in general, um, with the adoption of the new uh, on, new law on investment in and the new law on enterprise, uh, the investment uh, environment now become more uh, attractive to foreign investors to a certain extent. Uh, key changes are made to free enterprise from administrative procedure, uh, eliminate recurrence of uh, investments uh, related regulation, as well as open new door of opportunity for foreign investor to uh, into Vietnam markets with new uh, investment incentive. And uh, we hope that with the new regulation, more investors will come to Vietnam and receive more support from the government. And uh, I have just um, finished the, the, the topic on how to set up the company in Vietnam and also the, the, the noticeable change of the new regulation. So uh, now I would like to move to the last uh, topic talking about study case to show you how Vietnam can help uh, our client. Here we have a foreign investor being an Ital Italian group exploring the possibility to reinforce its presence in Vietnam by adding a production site to be based in the promised uh, meetings of accepting client allows the investor to stay closer to the referral markets in Southeast Asia, as well as importing product to the USA, uh, avoiding the potential stress under um, US-China trade war. And in this case, the client engaged Vietnam for a review of the, the feasibilities of the temporary export and transportation of the project as well as the custom duty of likable when exporting uh, the transform product to the EU, uh, ASEAN, China, and US market, considering the applicable FTA. Following this uh, feasibility review, uh, we assist client in identifying the location to assist to aid the factory based on the client need. Afterwards, the uh, we perform the licensing procedure to have the factory establishment together with the uh, environment protection formality construction assistant uh, in accordance with the law. And in addition to the above, the client also engages us for the day-to-day -day business management the service in a HR matter. And uh, what, what we did, um, we have uh, we, we provide a memorandum analyzing the custom and duty impact on the imports and export activity to and from the production side under the local regulation and the applicable free trade agreement, including the EVFTA. Uh, two, can you can you uh, please uh, show the next slide? Okay, thank you. Um, and also. For the factory incorporation, uh, we provide client with an advice on the, the whole licensing procedure, uh, capital structure, uh, environmental protection um, issues, noticeable notes on construction uh, of the factory under the new regulation. Uh, also, feeding them work uh, with the representative of the industrial park uh, on the review of the factory lease agreement and the legal documentation of the production side, um, such as the, uh, checking the certificate of land you write, certificate of factory ownership and uh, construction permit, uh, firefighting and prevention license, environment protection related material and, and others uh, factory related document. <clears throat> and following this, uh, FINAM apply and obtain for the required license while dealing with the, the, the competent local authority. And uh, also we provide a professional to support the day-to-day -day operation of the factory under the power of attorneys and strictly under instruction given by the client from time to time. And uh, this uh, definitely have our client to manage their business uh, under the current uh, traveling restriction. And uh, last but not least, we assist our client in applying for visa and work permit. 
to allow foreign experts to enter and stay and, and work uh, in Vietnam. Um, actually, I have just uh, finished my part uh, for the main topic today. And thank you for your watching. So now we, we, we can uh, uh, go straight to the, the Q&A section. So please feel free to send your uh, question in the chat box or Q&A box. So let me read Tao some of the questions. Um, the first question is that uh, for an existing uh, FIE, uh, should the legal representative be resident in Vietnam? Is that compulsory? Uh, thank you. Uh, give me some second to read the... Yes, sure, sure. So uh, are you opening the trust box or Q&A section? Yeah, yeah, this is the last question of the q and I uh, think this one is uh, quite interesting because it's still a, a broad uh, topic. As many foreign investors, they wonder uh, if their legal representative uh, should be resident in Vietnam or typically if they can have uh, the uh, managing uh, people in uh, overseas uh, acting as legal representative. This is always a key question in terms of corporate governance for foreign investors. Okay, uh, yes, I see the question from Mr. David Ching already. Thank you, Anne. Uh, for an existing fully owned foreign investment company, must the legal representative be resident in Vietnam? Uh, according to the regulation that that's, uh, as I already presented, uh, the company may have one or more than one legal representative and, and one of them must be a resident in Vietnam. So in case uh, the company just has only one legal representative and he do not stay in Vietnam. So he has to provide a POA to another person to perform his right and obligation uh, toward the company during the time he is not present, uh, present in Vietnam. And um, this is also one of the, our services, the service that Fidinam currently providing to our uh, our client, uh, due to the traveling restriction, there's a lot of uh, legal representative cannot uh, travel to Vietnam in this challenging time. And the issue and power of autonomy to uh, our Vietnam uh, professional uh, to allow her to work with any third party like the authority, uh, like client, uh, and we do is under the POA. Uh, yes, that is my uh, answer for this question. Yes, thank you, Tao. I think uh, it was an interesting one. Also, as you mentioned, uh, in those uh, troubled uh, uh, days of COVID and the uh, current uh, traveling restriction, uh, it's, uh, it's a key issue. Yes. So then I can pick up uh, some of the questions that I think are uh, broad enough for the whole uh, audience. Um, so one of the questions which is still uh, quite broad uh, is uh, knowing what should be the minimum uh, share capital uh, investors should uh, Shall pay in the FNB sector, in the FNB industry. But maybe it's too difficult to answer that uh, without um, yes. further yeah. knowing the project, but maybe you can elaborate a bit on the minimum uh, share capital investment, what is required in theory, uh, what you should put on the table in practice, and how things might differ substantially from an industry to another. Um, so actually, is the, um, the current regulation do not provide any regulation on minimum uh, capitals applied for uh, the companies uh, uh, in the F and B sector, uh, meaning that uh, the foreign investor will um, have their own financial plans and register uh, the capital that can be uh, enough 
to serve their operation. However, from our experience of working on these investment application, if uh, the registered capitals can, um, can um, enough for the, the first two years or for three years of the operation cost, there will be no uh, additional question. There will be no requirement from the licensing authority. So in this regard, it totally depends on the business plan, the investment plan of the client. Yeah, okay. Thank you uh, for this clarification, Tao. Um, yes, and, uh, and, and also for this question, if the investor needs some uh, remove remiller information on the taxation on the course uh, to operate a companies in Vietnam, such as for HR course, for office, something like that. So we can revert back with additional the information on the comments, the operation cost in Vietnam for, for your reference when making the financial plan. Okay, thank you, Tao. Um, I read another question. This one is in uh, the, the, the Q&A uh, session and it's, it's very um, specific um, because it's related to um, a potential investment in a waste energy plant uh, and, and uh, the, um, the attendee would like to know if uh, such investment would require investment policy approval so it would be uh, an investment below 100 million USD in a waste energy plant in, in Vietnam. I, I think, okay, regardless the fact that this question is very specific, it enables you to touch a few words on uh, investment policy approvals and how things uh, should be anticipated and, and work generally. Um, so actually, for these specific questions, uh, so please allow me to uh, have some further research because the, I need to read in the regulation, uh, not only is the law on enterprise and the law on investment, but other related uh, uh, document. So please allow me to get back the attendees via email for this question. Yes, sure, sure. It's, yes. it's very uh, specific, in, in fact, uh, and that's why I was trying to read first the question that we are uh, of a more general scope. <laughs> yes, I saw the question already and I noticed it and I will reverse back with our audience uh, via email after this uh, section. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, Tao. Uh, and... Um, Another question, which this one is also, uh, well, it is more general than the specific one raised on uh, the investment on the uh, waste energy plant. This one is um, dealing with the, the currency of the share capital. Uh, are Vietnamese companies allowed to invest in other currencies than the Vietnamese dong? Can they, can they have their share capital in US dollar, for instance? And uh, can they have bank accounts in Vietnam uh, in, uh, in different currencies, US dollar, Hong Kong dollar, uh, Jaminbi, et cetera? Yes, uh, thank you. I saw the question already, but um, it, it's not, um, let me clarify uh, one thing. Uh, for foreign invest, here is for Vietnamese company, I mean that's 100% uh, Vietnamese owned capitals or a Vietnamese a company set up uh, in Vietnam. Uh, if if uh, it means that a Vietnam a company set up in Vietnam, meaning uh, it may include foreign invested company. For foreign invested company, of course, they have right to have the share capital in USD contributed uh, by the foreign investor. But uh, for Vietnamese, uh, one hundred percent hold by. Uh, Vietnamese investor, in my opinion, is is not allowed to have the capital in USD. It must be in VND. Uh, however, for clear pictures, uh, please, um, Mr. Ori Ming Chong, 
um, can you please uh, let me reverse back to you via emails with some clarification regarding your questions and we will give you a specific answer on your concern. Yes, thank you, Tao. I think all questions uh, then listed uh, so far in the Q&A or the chat box are very specific in nature indeed. Uh, I see one general question, which is, can Fidinam share the slides with the participants? And I'm happy to say yes, uh, we will be delighted doing so. Uh, I guess it will be done uh, with uh, Adan and uh, the French Chamber of Commerce in uh, Vietnam. Uh, but uh, definitely I confirm that uh, on, on our side, there's no problem. We'll be very happy to share uh, these slides with you. Um, on all other specific questions, what I suggest is indeed uh, that you forward uh, your questions by email uh, directly to, to me or to Tao or to both of us. Uh, I'm just wondering where do our email addresses appear? I think too, maybe we could go back to the slides with uh, the um, team and maybe under the team, we see the email addresses. Uh, I'm not sure about that now, uh, but- The last, last slide, I, I guess. Yeah, exactly, this one. So here you have, uh, you have the address, the email address of uh, Tao or uh, my email address, and I suggest you use this uh, email address to send uh, any specific question you may have. Then we will take a necessary time together with Tao uh, to discuss your question and to offer you a call and revert to you uh, more into details. Yes, I, I do agree with the end because um, we already received all the questions and uh, more or less it related to a specific issue that uh, we want to deliver you for specific answer, not in general. And that's why uh, we are happy to revert back to you via email. And uh, here's, I see an interesting question from uh, Ms. Hue Do. Uh, she asked about uh, the enterprise registration doesn't have the information on the periods of the, the project. How do others know the timeline of the projects and what happens if the project still operate and the foreign ownership doesn't apply for the extension? So here it is correct that uh, the enterprise registration certificates do not did not uh, say any content, any information regarding this investment project, but the investment registration certificate does. You can check uh, the project uh, duration in the investment registration certificate. And um, whenever you work with a foreign investment company, you may require them to provide this certificate to check the scope of uh, investment activity they are allowed to do in Vietnam as well as the project timeline. And for the company, uh, there's no uh, term for the uh, enterprise registration certificates. It will be uh, depend on the decision of the company owner. If you want to check uh, the assistant, the legal assistant of the company, you can go to the website uh, of um, Dang Ki Kinh Doanh for, uh, it's mean for um, national enterprise data. You can check the legal status of the company. Yes, that is my, my answer for this question. So maybe we'll give back the, the, the mic to the, to the French Chamber of Vietnam if they want to, to say a final word. Uh, again, thank you both. Uh, thank you all for attending this uh, webinar today. Uh, thank you for your time. We know there are technical questions. Uh, this is uh, not uh, exactly an easy topic, but it's uh, very interesting uh, to, to dig further into it. And as uh, both the French Chamber and uh, Tao mentioned, uh, Vietnam is a land of opportunities nowadays in Asia and definitely a destination you should consider for your next uh, business investment. So this being said, again, thank you very much. And uh, 
Have a nice day. We'll be delighted to follow up by email. Thank you, everybody. Our replay will be also available in a few days. And do not hesitate to send any requests to CCIB or FIDINAM. Have a nice day. Yes, thank you. Thank you uh, for attending the, the webinar. Thank you for your support provided from the French Chamber in Vietnam. And thank you, own audience, for uh, attending our event today. So please do not hesitate to say to us uh, any questions, any concerns regarding uh, the new regulation as well as other related matters uh, uh, in other uh, sector. So uh, please uh, feel free to uh, contact us. Thank you and uh, have a nice day.